Welcome to Across the Goal Line. I am your host, Luke Gottesart. In this video, I will be giving you guys my week seven. Yes, week seven already of the college football season. Uh, it's hard to believe, but um, hard to believe it's halfway over already, but it is what it is. Um, so I'll be giving you guys my predictions uh, for this upcoming weekend. Oklahoma, Texas, Red River rivalry is going on on Saturday afternoon. Uh, you got Utah and USC Saturday night on ABC. Uh, and then, you know, Villanova and James Madison are playing down in Harrisonburg. And that's where college game day is at this weekend. So uh, I might give a little prediction on that. We'll have to see. Um, so uh, I'll give, uh, give my predictions for all those games, uh, plus some more. Also, uh, NFL predictions uh, for week six uh, are also out, so go check that out as well um, if you haven't already. So, um, But before I do get into my uh, week, week seven college football predictions, uh, I just want to make sure if you haven't already, be sure to go check out Across the Goal Line on all forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and obviously subscribe on YouTube. Um, that's obviously how you're listening to us, listening to me uh, at the moment, uh, is on uh, YouTube. So hit that subscribe button uh, right above and then hit that like button uh, down below. Uh, so go, uh, go, uh, do all that if you haven't already, and then, you know, I guess without further ado, I will get into my week seven cultural war predictions. I ended up going six and six this past week, uh, so I thought that was, you know, pretty good. It's all right. Uh, you know, I could have done better, but it is what it is. You know, I picked the games that I did. And I ended up going six and six, uh, so that's 500. Um, I'm happy, you know, I didn't do any worse. So um, this week's games, uh, I believe, how many I got here? Let me get, count these real quick. Go down through my notes. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I have 14 games to uh, go through uh, for this weekend. Um, but before I do, I'll recap last week's. NC State defeated Louisville last Thursday night, 39-25. NC State now has two wins over uh, two of the best ACC schools, uh, Florida State and Louisville. Clemson, uh, the other top ACC team, uh, defeated Wake Forest 28-14. Virginia and Duke uh, played in Charlottesville. The Cavaliers won by 7, 28-21. LSU went down to the Swamp, beat the Gators by 1, 17-16. TCU hosted West Virginia and beat the Mountaineers also by uh, 7 points, 31-24. Purdue and Minnesota uh, seemed like it lasted forever. Uh, there was a rain delay, but the Boilermakers came out on top, won by two scores, 31-17. Miami defeated Florida State 24-20 in what I thought was one of the best games uh, this past weekend. Ohio State defeated Maryland uh, pretty pretty bad, 62-14. Alabama uh, only defeated Texas A&M by one score, uh, 27-19. Michigan State upset uh, Michigan on the road, but it was a rivalry game, so you can throw records out out the door uh, and you know let these two teams you know battle it out and Michigan State ended up getting the better of the Wolverines won by a score of 14 to 10. Washington State went to Eugene defeated Oregon 33-10 and then Wisconsin went to Lincoln and defeated Nebraska 38-17. Uh, biggest upset uh, a lot of people are going to say Michigan State over Michigan but that was a rivalry game um, I'd say, you know, Michigan State is no longer little brother. Uh, I'd have to say Michigan is uh, just because in the past 10 years, uh, Mark D'Antonio now has a 7-3 and three record against the Michigan Wolverines. Um, so, you know, maybe... Maybe, you know, Michigan, you know, decides to... 
I don't think they would do this, but, you know, maybe Michigan decides to, you know, move on from old Jimmy Harbaugh if the fans start getting uh, a little irritated uh, and a little pissed off of, you know, how the programs, you know, run. He is 1-4 and four against uh, Michigan State and Ohio State uh, in his uh, less than three-year career uh, in Ann Arbor. Uh, la the only win was against Michigan State last year, but Michigan State was three and nine last year. Uh, and then the other, his first year in Ann Arbor, Michigan State won on that botched punt. But then he's never beaten Ohio State yet. But I don't, I don't think they would get rid of him. I don't think he's going to leave. Uh, you know, there's rumors, you know, speculating him to go back to the NFL. Uh, that Indianapolis Colt job might be up for grabs um, if they decide to fire Chuck Pagano finally um, you know so he could he could go coach there um, but you know we're set to see but I think Harbaugh Jim Harbaugh will be Michigan's head coach until he retires um, so I think I think you can put all that all those rumors to rest I think Jim Harbaugh is going to be staying in Ann Arbor but a lot of people are going to say that was a big upset uh, this past weekend uh, just because of how Michigan State was last year and then really haven't played anybody this year so far and then really the first big test of the year go on the road in a hostile environment. Weather's really, really bad in the fourth quarter. Um, and really, I think the only reason why they won that game, other than, you know, uh, playing good defense, was because of John O'Corn and good defense you know, he had three or four interceptions, I believe. John O'Corn lost the game for Michigan. Um, if if he would have, you know, protected the ball a little bit better, if they would have ran the ball a little bit more, I think Michigan, uh, they wouldn't have had to have thrown a Hail Mary at the end of the game to try to win it. But, you know, that's just my opinion. But Michigan State, Michigan, big upset, I guess. But then Iowa State over Oklahoma. Um, Iowa State goes to Norman, defeats uh, the Sooners 38-31, uh, to 31, and Oklahoma now for the, I believe it's the fifth straight year, they have been uh, double-digit favorites uh, in, a, in a game and have lost um, to a really a shit school. Uh, a shit, t well, I shouldn't say shit school, a shit team. Uh, and Iowa State was that team this year. Um, now, a lot of people are going to be raving uh, over this. Iowa State's probably still going to finish 5-7 and seven this year. So so don't get, you know, too excited. Yeah, it's a big win for them, but... Uh, and a big upset in, in the college football world, but... Iowa State, I don't even remember the last time they were good. Uh, I don't even know if they've ever been good. You know, Iowa State seems to be a basketball school, and really, um, they've only been, from what I've known or seen, Iowa State's only been a good basketball school the past couple of years, past four or five years. Um, really, they are still trying to compete with the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, for the you know best school in the state but I don't think that's they'll ever take over number one I think Iowa is always going to be you know the uh, the most uh, though the, they're the most I was the most favorite uh, college football team uh, probably in that Midwest region there um, because, I mean, same thing with Nebraska, because there is no NFL team um, in that area. The closest one, you know, would be the Chicago Bears or Minnesota Vikings. Uh, so, um, Iowa State, like I said, they're probably going to finish 5-7, and seven, but they beat Oklahoma, so it was a big upset. Best game, Miami-Florida, Florida State, probably the best game of the weekend. Uh, Miami scored with, I believe, 11 seconds left, 124-20. And then Western Michigan and Buffalo went to seven overtimes. Seven overtimes. Uh, tied for the longest game in college football history. 
and scored uh, the most points in college football history as Western Michigan defeated Buffalo on the road 71-68 in seven overtimes. Teams that impressed disappointed disappointed Oklahoma because they lost Iowa State, but no one really impressed me. Uh, so with that, I'll get into games this weekend then. South Carolina and Tennessee play uh, Saturday at noon. Um, Butch Jones, I think he'll be fired. Um, if they, and, and if they lose uh, this weekend to the Gamecocks at home, I think he will be fired after the game or early Sunday morning. But if not, he will be fired at the end of the year. Um, I got to take South Carolina. You know, they had a big win uh, last week against Arkansas at home. Really played well the entire game for the first time maybe in a couple years um, since uh, Spurrier was there. So I think, I, yeah, i got to take South Carolina over Tennessee. Texas Tech then goes to Morgantown to play, uh, play West Virginia. Texas Tech put up 60-plus last week. Uh, I know they played Kansas. But they still put up 60. West Virginia is coming off a tough loss to TCU on the road. Um, you know, this game for West Virginia could really um, make or break uh, their season uh, and Dana Holgerson's uh, tenure in Morgantown. You know, if they lose another big game at home, you know, this could be um, be the end for Her- Holgerson. Um, and, you know, they got a tough schedule coming up too, so um, they still got to play play Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, and Texas. Uh, so, uh, as I said, the Red River rivalry is uh, this weekend as well, uh, down in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, so I'll get into that here in a second. But uh, this game, West Virginia, they're going to they're gonna try to play their best um, and really start over after a loss to TCU last week, but I think they'll play the same as what they did last week, and I think Texas Tech will play play better, and I think Texas Tech is going to win. Michigan then goes to Indiana. Uh, Michigan coming off that loss to Michigan State. Harbaugh is going to have them ready. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. They'll beat Indiana, and then they then they come to Penn State on the 21st. Uh, Auburn goes to LSU, 3:30 on CBS. Uh, LSU's four and two. You know, they lost to Troy a couple weeks ago. Uh, Picked it back up last week. Auburn's surprising a lot of people this year, I think. Um, I could take Auburn on the road. Uh, You know, if Troy can go into Baton Rouge and beat LSU at home, I think anybody can. So I got to take take Auburn. Oklahoma then in Texas in the Red River rivalry, as I said, in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, famous Cotton Bowl. Um, for the 112th time, it's the first time since 1947, though, that both schools have first-year head coaches. Oklahoma has Lincoln Riley, and Texas has Tom Herman. Um, Texas, I think, is going to win. It's going to come down to the wire. It's going to be a shootout. Should be a really, really good game. 3.30 ESPN. I know I'll be watching it. Um, I got to take Texas. Uh, Oklahoma, you know, they lost to Iowa State last week. Um, you know, they they need this game more than I think Texas does just because they lost to, you know, Iowa State. But uh, I think I think Texas is going to pull it out in the end, maybe on a game-winning field goal, maybe in overtime. We'll have to see. But i got to take the Longhorns over the Sooners. Purdue then in Wisconsin. Um, Purdue, you know, I, I picked them to upset Michigan at home a couple weeks ago. Uh, they didn't. They really shit the bed in the fourth quarter of that game. Wisconsin, they really haven't played anybody yet this year. Uh, their really first tough test was last week uh, when they went to Lincoln and beat Nebraska 38-17. Uh, but Nebraska's not, not – they're good this year, but they're not as good – um, as what they've been, Mike Riley really, you know, he it's taken I think longer than what he expected, and who knows if he'll even be there with the Huskers um, at the end of the season due to 
uh, Oregon State's head coaching uh, vacancy, head coaching, uh, yeah, their their head coaching job is is uh, open again. So there's a vacancy up in Corvallis. Um, I don't know if he'd go back for a third time though, because he he was the coach of Oregon State, went to the Chargers, uh, and then went back, and then he was there for a while, and then he went to went to Nebraska. Now I don't I don't think he would he would go back. But if they if they'd welcome him back, you know who knows. But Wisconsin, or like I said, they really haven't played anybody. But Nebraska's you know really not Nebraska this year again. Purdue. It's going to be a tough game for the Boilermakers going on the road into Camp Randall. Um, you know, maybe jump around at the start of the fourth quarter will, you know, get them more pumped up, uh, and maybe they'll play better in the fourth quarter, unlike they did against Michigan a couple weeks ago when they shut the bed in the fourth quarter. And I think this is going to be a really, really close game uh, in the Big Ten West uh, on Saturday afternoon. I'd really like to take Purdue. You know, this game's really a toss-up. You know, what the hell. I'll take Purdue uh, to beat Wisconsin. Georgia Tech then goes to Miami. Uh, And, folks, you know, I am doing these uh, predictions off the top of my head. Um, I I have the games, you know, wrote out. I don't have any, you know, keynotes or hardly anything um, written below. It's all in my head. Um... I do have a really, really good memory, so if you did not know that, um, now you do. Georgia Tech goes to Miami. Georgia Tech's really surprising a lot of people. You know, they lost to Tennessee week one, but look at Tennessee now. You know, Butch Jones is probably going to be fired. Um, and they're probably going to, you know, get rid of everybody in Knoxville. But that's the least of concerns for Georgia Tech because they have to go to Miami. Um, but Miami, they maybe the U's back. Uh, let me know if you think if the U is back down below in the comments. Um, I think it's way too early to tell. Uh, yeah, they beat Florida State last week for the first time in seven years, but <clears throat> you know, well, I mean, we'll have to see. They're playing well, but Georgia Tech's playing well too. But I gotta take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Miami just because they're playing at home. Um, the, the key to that game, I think, is if Miami can stop the triple option, they'll they'll be able to win. Um, if they can't, Georgia Tech, I think, is going to run all over them. Navy then goes to Memphis uh, in a great matchup in the American Athletic Conference. Memphis, I think, is going to win. They put up 70 last week on UConn. Texas A&M then goes to Florida. Uh report came out the other day, yesterday actually, uh, as today is Friday the 13th, Friday, October 13th, 2017, um, report came out yesterday that Texas A&M will go after, or Penn State is worried that Texas A&M is going to go after uh, current Penn State and line head coach James Franklin if Kevin someone leaves. Well, if he leaves, the only way he's leaving is, is he, if he gets fired. You know, he's just not going to leave. they got to fire his ass. But, you know, Texas A&M, they've really turned it around since week one after blowing that big lead to UCLA. UCLA's hanging around in the Pac-12 right now. I mean, it, it is only going into week seven. We've only played half the year. There is still a lot of football to be played. Um... And then A&M, they stuck with Alabama at home last week. You know, they only, only lost by one score, lost by eight points. Um, I don't I don't see why Penn State's worried that Texas A&M, of all teams, is going to go after James Franklin. Um, you know, maybe this is a, a, you know, a report just to get to some attention. I, I don't really know. I really don't think Franklin Franklin would leave. Uh, I thought the same thing, though, about Bill O'Brien. He's currently in his fourth year as, as the Houston Texans head coach. So what do I know? Um, you know, we'll have to see. You know, if the money's right, maybe he does leave. If he does leave, uh, you know, good for him. I really have never liked James Franklin at Penn State to begin with, you know. 
Joe Paul forever. Joe Paul 409. I really, really liked Bill O'Brien, though, when he came in. Um, and Christian Hackenberg, who really hasn't got his chance in the NFL yet with the Jets, but that's a different story. That's another uh, story to talk about. Um, and then, you know, Franklin comes in. Only reason why Penn State was good last year and continuing this year is, well, their defense is really, really, really good. You know, I'll give them that. But Joe Moorhead is the reason why Penn State's putting up so many points a game. So if Franklin does leave to go to College Station, to go back to the SEC, by the way, as well, as he was the head coach for Vanderbilt for three seasons, Penn State, you need to go after Joe Moorhead. Keep him, keep him intact. Keep him right there in State College. Stay with the program. Uh, have him become the new uh, new head coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions, and you know, keep putting up as many points as you are now, and uh, keep winning Big Ten championships, and finally go to the playoff. You know, they should have been in the playoff last year, but they got fucked, got screwed. Um, back to the game, though. Texas A&M and Florida. Texas A&M goes to the swamp. Uh, Florida will be wearing uh, alternate uniforms that look pretty cool. Uh, you know, that could be a, a reason to pick Florida, I guess. Uh, but I got to take Texas A&M. They've, like I said, they've turned it around since that UCLA loss week one. And then they just hung in with Alabama at home um, last week. So, um... Now, is Alabama the best team in the country? I don't know. I really don't think they are. I think Clemson is. I'm currently watching Clemson and Syracuse. Uh, as I said, it is Friday, October the 13th, and Clemson and Syracuse are tied at 14, middle uh, of the second quarter. Um, so, you know, um, lost my train of thought there, but... Um, as, like I said, I'm watching the game. So, um, next game, Ohio State and Nebraska. As I said just a minute ago, Nebraska is really not Nebraska again this year. Uh, as uh, they thought going into the season that, you know, Mike Riley had finally turned it around. Well, they lose to Northern Illinois, and all that goes down the shitter. Uh, you know, I really, really feel bad for, for, for him and Nebraska's fans. Uh, Nebraska, they still could win the Big Ten West because um, Wisconsin's really the only team uh, good in the Big Ten West. I mean, Iowa's sitting there right now and Purdue's sitting there as well. Um, Purdue plays Wisconsin this weekend and Iowa plays uh, Wisconsin here coming up. So, a couple make or break games in the Big Ten West to decide the Big Ten West champ. But, you know, you just got to, you know, let it play out and what happens, happens. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, Ohio State, they're just too tough. Going to Lincoln, though, for the first time since 2011, the first year Nebraska joined the Big Ten. Uh, so that should be very interesting. Uh, by the way, that year Nebraska beat Ohio State. Last time they beat. Uh, the Buckeyes as well. Last year, this game, Ohio State put up 60-plus on the Cornhuskers and absolutely routed them. Um, I think I think Ohio State's going to win again this year. I don't think it's going to be as bad, but you just don't know. I didn't expect Ohio State to put up 62 last week on Maryland, who is really surprising a lot of people as well. Um, and that game, I believe, was tied. Or if not, Maryland was up by a score in the middle of the second quarter, and then after that, it just got Ohio State just blew them out. Um, but we'll have to see. I think Ohio State's going to win. Utah, USC, 8 o'clock ABC, as I said at the beginning of the show. Um, Utah, they lost to Stanford. A good Stanford team and Bryce Love uh, putting his uh, putting his highlight uh, reel into the Heisman, Heisman race. Coliseum is a tough place to play. USC, you know, they came came off that loss last week. 
uh, two, two weeks ago uh, to Washington State on the road, beat Oregon State last week. Um, I think they'll win again. They'll probably they'll probably win out and win the Pac-12. I mean, we might have a rematch though between USC and Washington State for the Pac-12 championship. You know, and really that could decide a playoff spot. Um, as both teams are ranked in the top 15. Uh, but then you also can't forget about Washington. Um, they are sitting there in the top 10. Uh, and that uh, Apple Bowl uh, during the last week uh, of the season is going to mean a lot as well. So uh, as this, there's a lot of ball to be played. We just got to let it, let it do its thing. And, you know, what happens, happens. But I think USC is going to beat Utah. Michigan State then goes to Minnesota. Minnesota, I think they're going to lose again for the second straight week, and they will be sitting there then at three and three. Uh, Michigan State, they're ranked now. Um, I don't think a lot of people saw this coming, but you know, they 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 probably never doubted themselves. You know, I can't speak for them though, as other people can as well, but. Um, it should be a very, very good game. I think this game is way under the radar, uh, probably because Minnesota's sitting at three and two. Um, you know, if if they wouldn't have lost to Purdue, who lost to Michigan, you know, this game this game could uh, you know be getting more attention, but it's not. You know, really. The main reason I think why is is because they're two teams really in the middle or to the bottom of the Big Ten. Even though Michigan State is, you know, ranked in the top twenty-five now after after defeating uh, Michigan on the road, but everybody everybody talks about you know the Penn States, the Ohio States, and the Michigans. Uh, in the Big Ten. No one gives Michigan State or Minnesota or Iowa or Nebraska or Purdue or Wisconsin or Maryland or Northwestern or Indiana uh, or, well, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll throw Illinois in there, but I sure as hell ain't throwing Rutgers in there because Rutgers, Rutgers sucks. Um, really, the Big Ten has 13 teams, not 14. Uh, because Rutgers, good God, they shouldn't even be in the Big Ten. The only reason why they are is because of other sports and academics, which is totally understandable. I get there are other sports that they play and academics, but, you know, you think by now they'd be a little bit better at football. I guess not. Um, Boise State then goes to San Diego State. By the way, I'm taking Michigan State if I did not say that. Boise State then goes to San Diego State. Uh, this game last year, I think, decided who who went on to play in the Mountain West uh, championship game. Um, San Diego State, they're playing at home. They're really the only football team in San Diego now since the Chargers left. Uh, so if they don't have a big crowd, I don't know if the, you know, there's something wrong because if people want to see football – and they don't want to drive to L.A., they need to go to a San Diego State game. Uh, so San Diego State's going to win. Oregon then and Oregon then goes to Stanford, excuse me. Um, you know, this is really a toss-up. Late game, this game is really not getting a whole lot of attention either, even though Stanford defeated Utah. And now Bryce Love, he's, you know, running all over the place running towards the Heisman. Um, should be a good game. Should be close. High scoring. Stanford, though, is going to win because they're playing at home. Uh, those are my Week 7 college football predictions. Let me know what you guys think uh, down below uh, in the comments. Share this on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, hit that like button down below, and then subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. And then you can follow me, Luke on uh, on uh, Twitter and Instagram, links to all, everything, all social media pages uh, are in the description below, and then be sure to go check out uh, my week six NFL predictions, 
Um, and then next week, uh, you know, week week eight college football predictions and NFL week seven predictions.